morning, everybody. Um, as was already mentioned, I work for the IT department of the German Archaeological Institute, where um, my colleagues and I have been developing IDF Field 2.0 since 2016, while I've been involved myself a little under a year now. Before I get into the specifications, I think it is important to focus a little bit on the history of the development and prerequisites. I think it doesn't come as a surprise to anybody in this room if I say that any archaeological project, maybe a survey or an excavation or a building research project, um, produces a vast amount of data and this is an increasing tendency. Also, different requirements regarding the terminology and the structure of the recorded data arise in the various archaeological disciplines. As a consequence, there has been a strong tendency in the archaeological community to develop project-specific um, matters of documentation. These vary substantially with regards to the accessibility and can range from a uniquely programmed database to handwritten documentation, which still exists. <coughs> the resulting heterogeneity of the data produced presents a difficult challenge, especially for the sustainable storage and for ensuring availability and comparability in the long run. Therefore, our goal was to create an application that finds the balance between interoperability and project-specific needs. <clears throat> so for facts and features, a brief overview on the main aspects that were considered before the development phase even started. The system we wanted to create should not only support different field research project methods, but also be very easy to use since um, archaeologists normally not have a degree in computer science. And it was also brought to our attention since we used um, FileMaker before that proprietary software um, increases the difficulty in cooperative efforts quite a bit. We also therefore emphasize on the fact that it shouldn't cost a fortune, in fact you can just download the source code, I will share the link with you in the end. Of course international teams of scientists should also be able to work together with the same database online as well as offline, so they should be also able to enter data and just synchronize it somehow at a later point. Um, the integration into the IDI world is of course also a goal and is still ongoing. In the bottom here, you see a timeline pretty much from the earliest FileMaker database in 2005 to the release of IDA Field 2.0, which was in the beginning of this year. We have come very far. Uh, and all these years, what we basically, to get to this point, did was we gathered a useful pool of information and knowledge about how different projects actually made use of the same system that was offered to them since more than 30 projects had communicated with us, sharing their needs and also the documenting and work structure. As we all know, much has changed in those years. Um, for example, uh, regarding SFM, it just hasn't been as important or widely used as it is today. So therefore, of course, requirements of an archaeological documentation database or whatever system has changed as well. <coughs> Um, still, there were huge differences in how they used the same systems in the fields that was used by the different projects, but of course um, a project dealing with building research or with street networks will have different data that they collect and therefore of course produce a different system. Um, but from the user statistics that we gathered for that, we could clarify what was necessary and what was not, and what was just making the structure more complicated. So we got rid of all of that, and that then consisted of our new data model. Looking at it overly simplified, any archaeological research project is represented through the Samini circle here. And um, so attributes will be needed, that will also be needed for all other projects. So for example, measurements, you need measurements for everything. You will also need attributes that are just relevant for a specific area of research, so building versus excavation, etc. And there will be very few in the non-overlapping part in the bottom that will just be relevant for one project and one project only. 
So we decided that for the consistency of the data to ensure that, we needed to pre-produce the attributes of the green and blue area, while we couldn't foresee what they actually needed in the specific projects, so that then would be created as needed. <coughs> and a field is a modular system. It consists of three main parts with the overview. Um, before I go any further into the next couple of slides, just a note that the data that you'll see in a bit has actually been um, it's real life data that has been produced in the last field campaign of the Mennings project of the Ludwig Maximilian University in Munich in cooperation with the DFG and the Bavarian University of Science and they were generous enough to let us use their data for show and tell purposes. So in the Übersichtsmodule, so the overview, only so-called main type resources are visible, which in our case means trenches, survey areas and buildings. Um, it is possible here in the top um, to filter and search for your data, for example also filter for specific resources. And as you can see in the top right here, you can also switch be between what we call the map view and the list view to just make it a little easier to enter your data and apply it to your specific needs. Of course, metadata can be added as well as project information, etc. And you can also search again and filter for that. <coughs> The Ausgrabung, so the excavation view, includes the information collected in trenches, so features, finds, samples, etc. Um, as you can see, you can not only enter <coughs> metadata, but also pictures, plans, geodata, and relations, which is very important for us because you can not only have a text field which says this uh, stratigraphical unit is above or below or before or after something else, you can actually, in that sense, relate them to each other. <coughs> Again, you can of course search and filter. The survey view is set up similarly, where the main type resource here is a survey area. In this project, it has been used to store information about an underwater survey, but you can also of course imagine um, a field survey with a scattered find pattern. Again, you can search and filter and enter information, pictures and relations. Uh, the third view is centered on building structures, so walls, rooms, um, etc. So also wall surface, specific information regarding that so that you can actually construct room plans for buildings much easier. <coughs> I cannot show you all the functionality because of time restrictions. So um, now that we have a brief idea uh, of what this is capable of um, and how the different modules work, we might ask ourselves, how does data flow and synchronization work, since I've been talking about that before. The typical data flow in um, field projects using IDA Field 2 starts, of course, with recording data with the help of a total station or a GPS system, or if you want to, IDIC um, works as well. Um, further processing, such as format conversion, georeferencing, automatic or manual topology cleanup, can be done in any um, GIS software or a survey to GIS, for example. This workflow uses GeoJSON as a standard format for import and export. Further, of course, elaborate descriptions of the documented context and artifacts can be done on a computer running the IDA field clients or the software we have seen before. And this also includes the possibility to import images and connect these, as I have already mentioned. What I haven't mentioned yet is that it's also possible to add your reference information for the pictures to get them as background plans within the world file format. Yeah, if a connection to the internet is available, the data can then be synchronized with the server or other clients as well. This on one hand, of course, establishes and in the server case, a central repository for all the projects, which in turn simplifies data management and preservation. On the other hand, the server offers interfaces in different formats and standards that can again be used by other applications for further data analysis. Um, for example, JS applications or tools for statistical analysis like R, for example. One such interface will be achieved by making available a synchronized PostgreSQL database with a PostgreSQL extension, as this constitutes a de facto standard for many JS applications and tools. 
Another API of the IDA field um, data is provided on the <coughs> server side is the REST API that is already used by IDA field web. This provides access to the data as linked data and serialized, serialized JSON LD. So um, how does this all work? Maybe it's, like, it's a bit technical, but I think if we walk through it step by step, I think it is quite understandable. So we start on the bottom here. The core of the system is the cross-platform desktop application IDA field client built with an electron framework which allows pretty much, to put it simply, to create native applications using web technologies like JavaScript, HTML and CSS. Further, Angular is used as the client um, side web application framework for building an application using TypeScript as a programming language. The data is saved within the NoSQL database PouchDB, which allows the data to be stored locally and also without the need of being online. This allows the app to be run also as a standalone application without requiring an internet connection at all. Or of course to install different software packages or whatever. So what is visible like this in the client pretty much looks like this as a document in the database. Besides the rather technical identifier in the top, it is still highly readable and also a very slim format to store the data. So since I've talked about synchronization before, what happens if two clients uh, record different data um, in the same project? The IDA field um, server provides online synchronization capabilities using CouchDB as an underlying database system. So a client on the left having the documents two and three and the one on the right having the documents one and two results in the CouchDB having all three documents and then sending them back to the connected clients so that subsequently everybody has all the documents. Well, of course, there's also mechanisms in place that ensure the consistency of the data, so there will be a warning if something has changed, etc. You can also imagine the same workflow with just one computer that you pretty much set up as a master client instead of synchronizing to the server. <clears throat> For the server, of course, there is um, some benefits since it is possible to use um, in built-in facilities for data management. For example, it's very easy to just clone a database and, um, yeah, of course, it doesn't actually use that much server space as well. It's a nice way to save your data. Yeah, so this is the same document that we saw earlier from our local um, PouchDB, now on the server CouchDB, so this is, it, the document doesn't change itself. It looks exactly the same. Yeah, also the server uh, provides uh, search capabilities, making use of Logstash and Elasticsearch, where the same three documents in this example that are now searchable in our search engine, so pretty much from the outside. So you don't need to actually run the Adafruit client, just have it on the server and the data there becomes searchable. <coughs> Yeah, these are made available to other applications through the RESTful API implemented as a Java Scarlet called Jeremy. The IDA field web acts as a, simply as a front end to the server and allows presentation of the data stored in the IDA field server on the web. Currently, it offers project-specific entry points uh, for the publication and visualization of the research data. It is currently being extended upon, since it's just very basic functionality at this point. And also, of course, um, to f uh, in the future, we're hoping to feature an overall meta search that will enable cross-project querying. Adafruit Web is also built on top of Angular, which allows for code reuse between the desktop and the web application. So, to summarize, what is Adafruit Field 2.0? It is a platform independent open source desktop client for the communication and documentation of field research data with the possibility of automated syncing with a generic and holistic approach. It's a lot of big words, but it's all true, I promise. And among these positives, I also have to mention that we use a very generic database model, so it's very adaptable, it's very, you can pretty much do it yourself if you know how to. 
Um, also something I haven't mentioned yet is the possibility to give attributes in the database with some different labels so you can store a configuration in different languages pretty much which then of course makes cooperative efforts a lot easier. Just to briefly talk about what we're doing right now, we are working on data publication systems that you get as, a, as pretty much uh, the full control of what data do you want to publish and then hopefully establish catalog publication a lot easier than it is possible right now. We're also working on a Harris matrix view to complete the archaeological tool chain, which should actually be, I think, published um, in the next, so there really should be in the next couple <coughs> of weeks. I can't promise anything, but it should, it should, we're working on it. As a goal for the near future, importing and exporting data in different formats will be realized. Also data that was acquired with the old FileMaker databases that I have shown before, or we migrate it into IDA field 2. While the productive system has been already started and new projects will start to use the software in 2018. Of course, maintenance and the care of the repository are on the to-do list. Thank you very much. Um, I will gladly take questions.